Nancy, it's lovely to chat to you today for She Can. Tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Hi, hello. I Well, thank you for having me. Um, and I've been looking at She Can and it's so exciting what you're doing and it's inspirational, all these wonderful women sharing their stories. Um, I am, my name is Nancy Cadogan and I am an artist, I'm a painter and yeah, that's what I do. Nancy, tell us a little bit about the journey and how you get got to be a painter. Oh my gosh. So I, um, gosh, right. I, um, I've always drawn, I've always, you know, I've always been drawing and there is an element at some moment you try and find your language. And I think that is something that is increasingly interesting. Um, so so at about uh, 10 or 11, it became kind of quite clear to me that my input was words, but my output was visual and that that was going to be my language to try and unravel the mysteries of human life. Um, and so that's kind of what I've been doing. And I went to art school uh, after, after school and I graduated in 2002. So now feels like a worryingly long time ago. And I uh, then moved to New York and I moved to New York with my boyfriend at the time, who is now my husband and father of my children. Um, and that was a sort of amazing and very exciting kind of journey to take together in those early courtship days, which feels like a moon away from a COVID world where I live in dungarees, you know. I know. Uh, <laughs> I know right. And so then it kind of all started there. Uh, yeah, it Tell all started there. Tell us a little there. bit more about the college you attended or university you attended and exactly which course you did and how you evolved over the last, you know, almost 20 years. Oh, my gosh. Yes, I know. Right. I'm sort of worried that it's been so long. Um, so uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, acad I'm quite academic. And at the time, um, 19... Seven was when I was leaving school and wanted to go and do a foundation course, which is the course you do before you do your art degree. Um, and mainly that's because art schools in actual secondary education, uh, no, a high school, you know, art school is quite limited. And so foundation allows students to go and try all sorts of things and see if they actually wanted to go in a different direction. It's really good. I did that at City and Guilds in London, which is fabulous and um I'm still, you know, very attached to that school. I then didn't know where to go for my degree because uh, conceptual art was all the rage. Sensation had just opened, you know, the huge, big Young British Artist exhibition and people have been queuing down the streets. It felt like it was almost like the first, it was a revolution in the art world. And it was a revolution in the art world because it touched everybody. Everybody knew about Damien Hirst's formaldehyde shark and, uh, everybody was shaken by it and the queues to the Royal Academy was just going, you know, around the street. And so I wanted to, in my uh, figurative way, I wanted to learn how to paint and I wanted to learn skills before ideas because I didn't, maybe arrogantly, maybe naively, um, uh, I didn't doubt the idea to have an idea. I doubted the idea to be able to execute one. And actually that has now changed a lot and people are going back to craft and skills enormously. Not that the YBAs don't have craft and skills, they do, but the education then around that was, uh, was being taught about the idea of you have an idea and then we will, the technicians and the teachers will help you create that. So I ended up, I was kind of lost uh, and I went down to Dartmoor and was painting literally on the moor and a man appeared over the hill and I uh, said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm painting. <laughs> and he said, I like your painting. He said, what are you doing with your life? And I told him how lost I was. And he said, uh, I think I know where you're going to go. And so I want you to go to this gallery on this particular street in London on Tuesday at 10 a.m. Take your work. And that will be your next three years. So off I trotted and I met a guy and I met these painters who um, had a kind of quite an academic enclave down in Canterbury and I followed them down there for three years. And it was amazing. It was super intense. 
and uh, very amazing. And amazing painters have come out of that. And I feel very lucky to have been part of such a kind of small but highly disciplined um, education. Amazing. But it was a kind of moment where, you know, people sort of, it wasn't, it, it was, it was, it felt like a real commitment to the craft. It wasn't, you know. And then in my third year, I met this really nice man who then went on to become my boyfriend and husband. And so suddenly there was a bit of sunshine. And he said, I have an American passport as an American. He said, I want to go and try my hand in New York. You know, I think that's a young man's kind of thing to do. And I said, well, that's marvelous. You go and do that. And I'm going to follow because um, that will be wonderful. And you're so free in America, aren't you? You know, you can really, that's the American dream is you can write your own story. And you want to be in a place where you're not, um, you don't bring the baggage of uh, preconceptions and that you can come with these sort of funny old academic -y paintings that I do and uh, start afresh. So that's what I did. And the most amazing moment was having my break there was for some reason ending up having this big solo show on Madison Avenue um, when I was 24. And of course I had no idea how amazing that was and <laughs> because I was 24, <laughs> you know, you kind of expect these things when you're 24. You're like, yeah, I got a show, what's the problem? <laughs> now I'm like, what, that's amazing. Incredible, Nancy. Tell us a little bit how you think that the States influenced your journey, your, your artistic journey. Well, it's about freedom, isn't it? It's about freedom to think and freedoms for ideas. And that's what, in terms of talking to women and talking to younger painters and, um, yeah, people aspiring in that, in, this, in that field, it's about finding a place that you can think freely. And if you can think freely, there's a chance that your thoughts will be kind of true and clear. And I think that's certainly um, a kind of, yeah, that's how I felt about New York at the time. I felt I could start, you know, I could limber up and find out what there was to say. And so I went out to Utah into the big fabulous landscapes and painted the big West and um, kind of, you know, uh, did my time in New York, sweating the pavements and drinking coffee. It was great. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> great. So it was definitely a pivotal moment in your artistic journey. It was a super pivotal moment. And I came back and eventually I needed green. And, uh, it, it, you know, at the same time, the energy and adrenaline is the same kind of thing that can be quite tiring. And uh, so we, I, I, we, look to moving back and I got married and I had a, and then I sort of had a big show over here and I went out to Ghana and did some work out there which was really really interesting and I had a show back here and then I was pregnant with my first child and I fought hard working with that I kind of almost denied my pregnancy uh, even though I was enormous and I was just like no no no, no it's just the pizza because I was so anxious that it would all stop, you know, that things stop with children. And that fear um, is, is deep. And, you know, and as far as I could tell, the history of art did not support uh, female artists and let alone mothers. Um, you know, people have complicated relationships with their children in the art world if they were women. They were, because how do you, how do you, combine um you know changing nappies and making endless food and all that love that you give with creating paintings which are children in their own so that was a uh very very fearful moment for me and so I had this first child who I love very much and that's my eldest son and uh worked and struggled with it all, never struggled with looking, loving the child, but struggled with that relationship and that sense of that I should have been doing something, that I should have been elsewhere, but here I am bound by nappies. Um, and then you look at the baby and you're like, well, who cares? I'm so happy to be bound by nappies. Look at this sort of gurgling, joyful infant. It, it's, I'm not alone in struggling, having struggled with that push me pull you of basically personal ambition and personal space. 
uh, compared with mothering, which is the antithesis of that. Um, what was very, uh, I eventually moved to the countryside and actually moved into the house that I grew up in, which in terms of suddenly having to be, if we talked about New York being a moment where you could write your own story, you then move to your family home, which is, the story is almost written. And in a way, that's kind of this moment of acceptance, isn't it? It's like, OK, well, there's no getting away from it. This really is who I am. And uh, I have to be as honest as I possibly can. And from that, at that moment, when sort of this, uh, you know, this, you know, it's just this is my roots. You know, people, if people judged it, they judged, you know, everything, really. I mean, that's just who I was. And um, I then, on the back of that, had this other, uh, had, a, had started making work about books and literature, which is something which you know I've been always obsessed with and passionate about in terms of my input being with words, and my output being pictorial. Um, and I was so worried that the world, you're so worried. And the, what I want to give confidence and hope to anybody is you're just so full of worry. And that the world has kind of moved on without you. You know, it keeps spinning really fast and people keep doing all these things. And maybe your little place in it has sort of disappeared into a sea of chickens and children and school run and uniforms and endless cooking. And then this kind of amazing moment of coming back to work. So I had a studio sale in 2015 where I just sold everything. I'd had these exhibitions and I just wanted it clear it was a psychological kind of car boot emptying of everything. I was like, we're starting afresh. And then in 16, went out to Miami and things started happening. And I realized that the world had actually moved slightly back into my favor in terms of the story of the female artist. You know, the thing you're doing now that she can is, sorry, my phone was just pinging there. The, the she, you know, this, this, the, the story of, of womanhood, of girlhood, whatever you want to call it, is becoming more and more to the front. Yeah. And female artists, you know, there are all these fantastic um, accounts and people and art historians and people are really working on changing the narrative there. Figuration was back. So suddenly painting books <laughs> and thinking about literature and being kind of academic, which has always been a tricky space to navigate, suddenly was kind of welcomed with open arms. And so that sense that maybe if you just keep doing what you do, if you just keep being really honest with it, that it does sort of come about. It does, your time, your time comes. And if I'd known that, of course, I would have been able maybe sort of been able to relax a lot more with the children when they were young. Oh, I, I love this. Thank you so much for telling that story because I think it's so important. And I think so many women are in that position because we have so many roles. We're not defined by this one job or this one role. We have so many roles and, you know, we're always trying to be perfectionists and do it all so great. And um, so I think that's a really important story to tell, Nancy. Thank you. Nancy, what would you say? I mean, you obviously muddled through it. You came out the other end. You produced <laughs> three beautiful children. Um, and you are really on a high um, work-wise and art-wise. And what motivates you going forwards? Oh, um uh it, oh that's such a that's such a big question i've really got to think about that i mean i, I what, in terms of the work what motivates me is um telling these female these in my paintings there are off, there's often a woman and she often has her eyes shut and predominantly she's blue at the moment um and she is this kind of omni woman this sort of female protagonist telling her story and increasingly I pushed away from any sense of it being autobiographical because I said, no, no, this is about everybody. This is about, and it is about everybody. But when, but as soon as you realize that there is in a sense, your story is this, everyone's story is unique, but also everyone's story is universal because we're all doing, we're all in our goldfish bowl for however long we're on this planet. And so I think the, 
the work, those stories becoming truer and more accurate and being able to touch more people and uh, be quiet. They're quiet friends paintings. They provide solace and they provide a, a, a vehicle for, a, for your own quiet dialogue. Um, and so I, that's what I'm hopeful for. Yeah, that's, that's, that's great, Nancy. And I think that's exactly what your paintings do. And I think we're all here potentially to hear this feminine side of you know, everybody. So I think that you do a large part in that. Nancy, what would you say, um, what lessons or top tips would you have for other women? Oh, I mean, don't worry. Try not to worry. I, mean, I think that comes part and parcel. I think I popped out of my mother worrying. And if I could somehow calm or, or help anybody uh, realize that, you know, just try and calm the inner dialogue and just say, don't worry, it's gonna be all right. You know, if you keep being true and honest and kind and keep doing what you love and working hard, it will be all right. Nancy, and what would your dream be? What are your dreams? What are my dreams? Oh, yeah. at the moment, a summer holiday and to get out of my house that I've been living in for a really long time. <laughs> I don't know about you. All of us. I would really like, I want to dive into the sea. I want to feel that will be, that's my dream at the moment. I and mean, I just want to see what the sea looks like. I live in the middle of the, I very live in a very landlocked part of the English countryside. And, um, uh, that would be that would be the dream. That's not answer, that's not really answering your question, which is a bigger one. But that's kind of <laughs> where I am at the moment. Where we're at. Yeah, I think we're all. I think we all need quite a. Um, uh, I mean, we've all been through quite a thing this year, haven't we? And everyone's uh, had extraordinary times. Yeah, and there are times that are very particular to each person's family and personal experience. You know, be they living in on their own in relationships with families, not families, elderly relatives, you know, all of that. And I kind of think we all, every, there needs to be a collective sigh of um, almost, almost all, a collective sleep, because I think people are very tired and uh, uh, are just a kind of a recalibration. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. But Nancy, do you think that the pandemic was potentially good for you work-wise? I made a whole exhibition during lockdown Amazing. about, which is currently in Rome at a wonderful little museum called the Keats Shelley House. And it was about the poet John Keats who had a bicentennial and uh, earlier this year. And um, it was made in lockdown what was extraordinary, which I didn't know, well, well, I didn't know when I was signed up to do the show, is that Keats was in lockdown and in quarantine and had these experiences and his, the mental turmoil of being physically contained whilst his mind being elsewhere, that sort of sense of imbalance between the two. And we then go into lockdown and I was making a whole exhibition about that process. So. And then we installed it in this kind of tiny window of um, uh, this tiny window of tier two or something. And it was open for like six days before it shut. So lockdown has been both prolific, um, but hugely intense because I've not been trying to make work escaping the lockdown. I've been making work immersed in it and in the fact that this, these sorts of experiences have been going on ever thus, you know. Keats was not on such a maybe a pan global level as COVID, which has been just extraordinary and so awful, so awful. Um, so it's been really intense. Another reason to dive into the sea, whenever that sea emerges. <laughs> Nancy, thank you so much for telling your story. It's been really great to chat to you. Thank you so much for having me.